Hi guys, welcome back to Mage on the Mage server with me, Sid, and uh, I've been busy. Um, I've had, I'm having real problems because I, I just play this pretty much every night between doing other episodes and stuff, and there's a danger that I'm doing more than I really need to do between episodes, and obviously you'll have noticed last week's um, Mage episode ran to four rather than the traditional one and the new scheduled replacing i can't believe it's not minecraft 2 so yeah i i'm kind of think so i'm, I'm just been working um on another floor for the tower this has come in yet again another indent and and i'm going to have a little like balcony and stairs going up there but that's um that's more for later but what I have really been working on, big time, oops, that's not stairs, the, uh, <laughs> this juts out a bit too far at this point to carry on up, so I've kind of gone and taken them else, the stairs elsewhere. I had a, some bloody jungle spiders, tarantulas, spawn in here earlier, and I don't know how, there's no spawnable spots. Uh, in fact, while I'm talking about spawnable spots, let me turn that off. Now my dig spell is my Mark Three, Dig Mark Three. I have got it working so it can mine anything. Um, and to do that, if I start, if I change the mode, that is a projectile with prosperity, which was unlocked when I used the previous dig spell. Um, I'm not sure which combination it was that unlocked it, but that unlocked prosperity. So we've got fortune on our default setting. And then you do projectile, and then you do mining power three times, and that gives you enough power to mine obsidian and diamond and yada yada. Unfortunately, you can't then stick the prosperity on it, because you've only got th room for three modifiers, so meh. Problems, you know? Uh, and then there we've got the feather touch as well, so my mining spell is pretty much good. Now I need to drop off some stuff mob drops spiders because the stinking git ambushed me i'm going to need you uh and any more glass we'll have that yep there we go and we are going to need a whole bunch of uh well for starters i need let me let me get my book and we'll take a walk while we read so, we are going to get into mana generating flora today. Uh, oh, I uh, I forgot I'd installed the statues mod, so I've got a couple of statue me's there. I need some armor, but uh, I haven't got any spare kicking around. So, we've got the culp, they're, they're going really well, and we're getting to the point now where these are yielding slightly, and I say slightly more seeds than uh, it is. A fairly rare drop when you get additional seeds. Um, but there you go, that's that one. And then I made these essence seeds, which if you recall, the essence seeds were the basis for the first lot of seeds. But these give me essence, which obviously I'm going to need for quite a few things. Um, oh, two more. So, yeah, we get the essence, sometimes we get nature essence, we've got coal essence, sometimes we get a weak essence drop, and obviously we get the seeds as well. The only problem with these crops is they are damn slow to grow, uh, as we were talking about last time. And Natura has a way to actually do that. Now, I dug this out with, again, plots 5x5 five five, like before. I put my little um, petal pocket 3 in there and I've got an infinite water source down here. Um, and I dug this out to put in the... Doo -doo, let me get them up there. The day bloom and the nightshade. Basically the opposite of the day bloom. Um, which is black, grey and purple. Petals. So they're fairly easy to make, but I'm going to need a lot of them because they don't generate a lot of mana. And I tested this out in my test world, and guess what? They didn't work because they need access to the sky. So, armed with my trusty projectile dig spell, I dug four honking great light wells. 
and put glass at the top just to stop any of uh, my fellow players hello guys <laughs> falling through and also any mobs dropping down and also glass at the bottom just just in case extra paranoia there and this does work so we are going to need for the day blooms let me uh, just go back and get into the day blooms it's a rud basic and rudimentary generating flower simply put it forms modified photosynthesis in order to transform sunlight into mana it's rather slow but you think half a dozen or to ten of these should get the job done for now i am going to have one two three six nine plus four thirteen in each one of these plots and thirteen or is it slightly less night blooms perhaps so i'm going to need a lot of yellow petals orange petals and light blue petals now we may have enough to get us at least started off so every time i see one of those grown i have to break it um i may have enough to get started off just to do uh, a couple of each or something like that so let's go and have a look at what we've got hiding in here first things first drop off all that lovely stuff and what did i say mystical yellow so i've got three of those was it blue or light blue mystical light blue and a mystical orange well there's orange uh, that's cyan your light blue and then the other one was no not the end of flame we're not quite there yet nightshade Nightshade is black, black, grey and purple. So we're going to want our purple plants, we're going to want our black plants and light grey, no. Please be a grey. Have I got a grey? Have not got a grey? Uh, okay. Right, so I need to get some grey to do that and I'll need you as well. Um so we'll go and get the day bloom done just so we can go through the process it's pretty straightforward stuff oh yeah seeds you don't forget your seeds and i'm going to actually need quite a few seeds so i might have to uh i might not have enough to do the initial plot sizes that i had envisaged i've also off camera made some more living rock and some more living wood um because i'm going to need a fair bit of that Oh, you can wait now. So, we've got our mystical yellow flowers, petals, and I need two of those. Uh, we need orange in each. We need one of those, and we need light blue, and we need one of those. Let me just put my spell book out of the way. And all we do is get the old thing we can right click and obviously it tells you all about the stuff all we do is go with yellow and yellow and that and blue uh, grab a seed chuck it in and we have our first day bloom lovely so i'll put this one here doesn't really matter now obviously it's not going to work at the moment because it's just coming out of night time and if we right click on it with a wand of the forest you can see it's it's got nothing so armed with my trusty bucket we'll uh we'll get a few more of those guys done Bonk. and what was it one of them and one of them okay and so far da -da. Duh. Duh. Uh, oh, and then duh. and then repeat rinse and repeat many many times and as i say this is these are these are basic mana producing plants so um we're not going to get a huge amount out of them but coupled in numbers oh, <laughs> oh well i dropped a whole lot in there in numbers they will and you can see now look that's 
that's got a nice little particle effect animation. Uh, and if we get our wand of the forest now, you can see that one is charging. That one is charging now. You might think, well, why don't you just spam them down? Like that. But they don't work as efficiently if they're right next to each other. Um, so, or well, at least the tutorials I've watched said that. So unless this has changed in, in the intervening time. So I am going to need to go and get a whole load of grey flowers, yellow flowers, blue flowers, uh, light blue flowers and orange flowers, which is going to take a while. So I'll go off to do that and I will see you in a little bit. OK, I have, uh, <coughs> pardon me, a little croak in the throat. I have got one patch done. It's I'm, I'm practically out of seeds. You can see these things. These are the uh, nightshades. These are the day blooms. And if we get our wand of the forest, we can see that that's full. That's full. That's full. So these all have a small internal buffer um, for mana. And what we need to do is we need to get that mana from here down there now I could have set these up down there of course which you know might have been sensible but there there's method to my madness it's not a particularly good method but there is method now I want to swap that out for that because I'm going to need a crafting bench here anyway um, so the first thing we are going to need are mana pools let me just come back from here oops so into mana manipulation section we're going to need mana pools <coughs> which are simply simple enough living rock in a U shape dead easy and we are going to need a mana spreader which tells you about how they you can see the lines that they actually go on and yada yada but we'll go into that in a moment and they are living wood any old petal and gold so let's go and get our first Mana spreader. Um, and our first mana pool. And I need some cobble, damn it. So what we're going to do is, because I want to keep this as hidden as, I want to keep a lot of it outside. I don't want these ugly great blocks sticking out everywhere, firing mana around. But I don't want them to be visible because the actual effects on these is pretty sweet, to be honest. Uh, take you and you. And we'll take uh, a little bit of you and you. There you go. So the mana spreader will collect mana from nearby mana, ge mana generating plants. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure what the range is, but I believe it's in the region of about five or so. So, one mana spreader will be able to cope with all of this. So, what we are going to do is here, we're going to dig down, and we're going to come this way until we get to the middle. And then we'll just take out that and that just to give me a little bit of wiggle room. Wiggle room. And because I don't want this to look super ugly, I'm also going to take those out and put this in here. And then, oops, I didn't really need to do quite that far. The, uh, these in here. I'm going to need to have a wiggle room at this side as well. Uh, and wiggle room there. And we're going to take our mana spreader and we're going to place it so it's facing down. So what we wanted to do... Oh, hang on. I need to put the mana... I don't know... I, I, I'm guessing this doesn't matter, but it, it certainly did seem, didn't seem to work as well as when I placed the pull first. And then now you can see, bang, and it'll start pulsing. Um, so there's mana in that pool. You can see the range, and 
that will show you the direction the beam is going and eventually it will start to fade out so there is a rate limit to the range on these and you can see the mana building up in it and every so often when it gets to a point it will and it, you see that when it even when it looks bang so so that's quite a nice little visual and I whilst you'll not be able to see it here oh there's a bloody helicopter outside Oh, not that one. Uh -huh. We want some of that going on. Well, you'll not be able to see it here. You will be able to see it, because I'm going to cover, the, replace this lot with glass. And we're going to fire the beam straight down the middle of the floor. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this coming here. And you can see where I've cocked up on my... Uh, And then we're going to have this coming this way, and we'll, that's fine, and we'll pop that out just so we can get a bit of light on the situation. We are going to come here and go plob, and now I need, uh, I need another mana spreader, because I've got to now get the mana and another mana pool. So that's going to be a mana pool, and then we go mana spreader, and I'm I'm not entirely sure whether I've got enough to do everything here, but I should have, I hope. So again, we will pop you there. Uh, we'll replace that and that. And that, now that's going to go that way and continue over to that side for the mana spreader over here. So, and you know, it's only this is only cobble. So if I want to make sure everything is super super neat and tidy, I can just pop these out as well. And then we can come in here. We've got a mana pool going over here. And we put our mana spreader pointing this way. And bang, now the mana's transferring from that pool to this pool. All good. And this is pretty, pretty basic at the moment. Uh, so we can hop up here. We can stick some of you back in. So I need to repeat the thing for this side, even though there's no flowers here yet, and I'll have a, a mirror image on this side. So I'll do this off camera and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so I've got this, this one feeding in, that's ready to feed in one, it's got flowers. I'm just making some uh, more living wood because I ran a bit low. Um, and obviously you can see here we've got mana spreaders running down and this one is just transferring all the mana down to this pool here. Now these mana, these mana pools will be ultimately replaced. Um, these are just, because I've only got plants here and here at the moment, well here when I put some, um, there's no desperate rush to do them. So. Obviously, we don't want all the mana just coming all the way down here and pulling at the bottom. Um, what we need to do is, is to have pool, mana pools either side to feed the plants we're going to use for this. And what we need to, to use to do that is a mana distributor. And this is a little bit more complex to make because we need two mana steel ingots. Now these are pretty simple, you have some mana in a pool, you take an iron ingot, you throw it in the pool, you get a mana steel ingot. Real complicated stuff, so for the time being I've just left this one open and there we go, two mana steel ingots. Now that can be used for making lenses, which more will come pylons. Uh, distributors, we can make mana steel nuggets, uh, and, and that is pretty much it. Um, although I believe you can inf do an infuse stuff later on, which gives you uh, some nice options. So, what we need here is one of those, 
I believe it's just that and that, and that will give us a mana distributor and two mana pools. So this time we're not going to be using a um, spreader, we're using a distributor. And down here at the end, which will knock you out, take you out, we'll go bop, 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 and bop. Uh, it's a bit dark, so let me just light this up temporarily. Uh, and take that out of the... Oh, I need one more. I do need one more uh, spreader. Okay, not a problem. Uh, so, we can take our blocks and we'll pop these. And again, this, this is just me being a bit anally retentive about look and feel of the thing. So when you're looking through the glass, you don't see raw stone. Um, not necessary, but, you know, this is just me. Oh, hang on, gimme. And then we come down here. And pop, pop, pop. And all of these spreaders will ultimately be replaced by distributors and double mana, uh, triple mana pools, actually. Well, they'll not be replaced. The spreader will come in. The pool will be replaced and be moved to the other side of the spreader. It, it will become apparent one when we actually start doing it. But I need one more mana spreader. So let's get that quickly in. Because I'm conscious of time and I'm sure we're, we're going to overrun as usual. Oh, did I not pick you out? Okay. So we need one more mana spreader. Bonk. Uh and the two pools. Brilliant. A lovely, 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 excellent, gorgeous, and excellent. So this comes in here, like this. We are going to put the distributor here, but before that we are going to place a mana pool either side, and the distributor will split the mana equally between the two. So, pop that in there, and if I just pop down one just so I've got the definite range, so it's not, sometimes they point upwards, and that will start hitting that and be distributed into the, uh, into the network down here. Okay, uh, so we can take our glass and cover that all the way up. So all the mana now is being distributed into these two pools here. Now all of this is wonderful and I mean the visuals if we can see it when we get a burst it should do any moment. Yeah you can see the burst coming down and we can use the mana lens lenses to change the colour of that burst as well which um, we will do once we're a little bit more mana rich. Uh, but there is one last ingredient, uh, and that is functional flora. Now, so far we've looked at generating flora, uh, but now we're going to functional flora. And there's a whole load of these. These have uh, tiger's eye, for example. Basically, it makes creepers run away and not explode, um, which is going to be useful. But we want the Agricarnation, which is a flower that turns mana into a type of natural fertilizer. Uh, but now we've got some complications. We've got a red mana petal, mystical yellow petal, green mana petal, mystical lime petal, mystical lime petal, and, and so we've got that. And then we've also got the Rune of Spring to make. Um, so this we need to, again, we're going into a runic altar, and we haven't got that yet. Uh, and we need to make a red rune, and we need to make a... A blue rune. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, again, man of steel, fishing rod. Um, so we are going to have to get into runic altars. That's the next thing to go at the moment all we're doing is collecting mana in these pools and this will happily tick along and do its thing 
um, and we can use that mana ourselves. I just love some of these visual effects these magic mods have. You already know my opinion on uh, Thorncraft. So to do that, we are going to have to get into the Runic Altar. Um, and it's not that one. I'm trying to remember where it is. Is it the uh, Runic Altar? So in order to create these, we require a Runic Altar placed by... Uh, So let me have a look. It should tell me the recipe eventually. So this is living rock surrounded by either a mana diamond or a mana pearl. And that is basically a diamond thrown into a mana pool. Uh, and it needs quite a bit of mana. So we're going to have to let this build up over time. Um, but eventually we'll get that runic altar, and then we'll be able to craft the agricarnations necessary. And they are going to sit here and here and then similarly there'll be another one here and here and another one here and here um and they will exert their bone meal well not bone meal their growth effect on all the plants does that make sense it will do once we get to making it i promise um so yeah until next time i think that's probably about as far as we can go with the um things we need to get into this runic altar and to do that we're going to need to let the mana build up um we can have a quick peek see how how they're doing there may be quite a bit in there by now no it's quite quite a pitiful amount um i will go and get the diamond anyway just to see whether we can get the actual rooney culture done before we finish um, but we'll not get a chance to use it till the next episode i'm afraid because i am conscious of the time i'm also conscious Oh, bit of lag. Oh, I'm in the wrong safe as well. <laughs> I'm like, where's my diamonds? So, yeah, I've been strip mining a bit. I've set a strip mine up down the end of that corridor as well. So I managed to recoup quite a few of the diamonds that I uh, lost doing the... Um, the spell so let's have a yeah see there's not enough mana in that yet so we're going to have to wait for that to charge up um obviously i will continue and get the other three patches done um and they need all of this rigmarole done for the next episode but until then uh i will see you soon and thank you very much for watching guys bye for now